Welcome to the afternoon briefing. First speaker is going to be Miami Dade County Mayor Honorable Daniela Levine Cava. Good evening, everybody. The end of day seven, and the search and rescue continues. Since our last briefing, I'm very pained to tell you that we found two additional bodies in the rubble, which brings our total count to 18, 18 fatalities. It is also with great sorrow, real pain, that I have to share with you that two of these were children, aged four and 10. So any loss of life, especially given the unexpected, unprecedented nature of this event is a tragedy. But the loss of our children is too great to bear. Our community, our nation, and the world, we're all mourning with these families who have lost loved ones. And we grieve with them and we lift them up as a community and we're so grateful for the support from all of you everywhere uh, as we continue, uh, as we continue to dig through the rubble. So we're now standing united once again with this terrible new revelation that children are the victims as well. So in the worst of times, we come together and we pray together. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. One hundred and thirty nine people are now accounted for and one hundred and forty seven are unaccounted for. Our detectives are continuing to verify each and every contact, each and every tip that is received about missing people. And I wanted to share a few other operational updates. As of 5 p.m. today, just past, the National Hurricane Center released projections for a potential tropical cyclone five. And uh, as of right now, we don't anticipate impacts from this system right here. Uh, however, it's too early to detail uh, any potential impacts for early next week. And so the storm is continuing to develop. We are closely monitoring its trajectory and progress. The Florida Division of Emergency Management Director Kevin Guthrie and Miami-Dade Office of Emergency Management and Dem Deputy Incident Commander Charles Cyril will provide further updates on how Florida Department of Emergency Management and Miami-Dade County are working together to take all of the necessary steps to prepare for and manage this latest development. We've already moved swiftly and we've added resources to our operation in preparation for a possible storm event and more resources and personnel are being deployed as we speak. It's truly a collaborative and comprehensive operation. You've all seen it. And over the past day, our footprint has expanded even further. Resources coming from the U.S. Small Business Administration, they're now deployed on the scene and they're providing support to the families that have been impacted as well as businesses. I've spoken with our chairman of the commission, Pepe Diaz, and we've been working closely on several issues together, including the South Florida Water Management District, to make sure that they create the capacity to handle the amount of water given that the ongoing storms and the possible future storms headed our way. It's a phenomenal amount of water, you all know, and we need to make sure that we can handle it effectively. And I want to thank our National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. The director from Washington, D.C., Dr. James Althoff and his staff are here, as well as the Small Business Administration Public Affairs Specialist, Roberto Baltadano. They're here today and they are going to share some important announcements and updates with you. Thank you to the incredible team on the ground who are giving everything they have to this operation. Around the clock, our, our gratitude is immeasurable. And so please let's continue to keep them, the victims and the families 
and their loved ones in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you and God bless. Buenas tardes a todos. La misión de búsqueda y rescate continúa sin detenerse los últimos siete días. Aquí estamos al final del séptimo día. Desde nuestra última sesión informativa, hemos encontrado dos víctimas adicionales entre los escombros. Eso eleva nuestro número total de muertos confirmadas a 18. Es con gran dolor personalmente y pesar en el corazón que comparto que dos de estas víctimas eran niños de 4 y 10 años de edad. Cualquier pérdida de vidas, especialmente de un evento catastrófico, es una tragedia. La pérdida de nuestros hijos es un dolor demasiado grande para soportar. Nuestra comunidad, nuestra nación y el mundo lloran con las familias de aquellos que hemos perdido. Lloramos con ellos y los levantamos como una comunidad unida por la pérdida. Ahora unidos como nunca antes en los peores momentos mientras oramos por todas las familias. Ahora tenemos 139 personas que están contabilizadas y 147 desaparecidas. Ya que nuestros detectives continúan verificando todos los informes que hemos recibido sobre personas desaparecidas para por proporcionar la última información disponible. También quería compartir algunas otras actualizaciones operativas. A las 5 de la noche ahora el Centro Nacional de Huracanes publicó proyecciones para el potencial ciclón tropical número 5. En este momento no se anticipan impactos de este sistema en todo el sur de Florida durante el fin de semana. Sin embargo, es demasiado pronto para detallar los impactos potenciales para eh, principios de las próximas semana. Entonces, si estamos muy alertas, la tormenta continúa desarrollándose y estamos monitoreando las de cerca su trayectoria y progreso. Ya nos hemos movido rápidamente para comenzar a agregar recursos a nuestra operación en pre preparación para una posible tormenta. Y mientras hablamos, si están desplegando más recursos y personal. He hablado con el presidente de la Comisión, Pepe Díaz, y hemos estado trabajando en estrecha colaboración en varios temas, incluyendo, incluido el Distrito de Administración del Agua del Sur de la Florida, creando capacidad para manejar la cantidad de agua dadas las tormentas en curso y las posibles tormentas futuras que se avencinan. avencinan. Gracias al increíble equipo sobre el terreno que está dando todo lo que tiene para esta operación. Por favor, continúe como siempre para la semana pasada, cada día, cada noche, manteniéndolos a ellos, a las víctimas, las familias, a todos sus seres queridos en sus pensamientos y oraciones. Gracias y buenas noches. Excuse me, the unaccounted for number is 145. Los desacontables son 145. Gracias. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Division Director of Office of Emergency Management, Deputy Incident Commander Charles Cyril. Good evening, everyone. I want to begin my update with some news related to potential Tropical Cyclone 5 currently in the Atlantic Ocean. Contingency plans for this incident have been developed should this system become a threat to Miami-Dade County. And we move into her as we move into hurricane season this year, I encourage all Miami-Dade County residents to download the Ready Miami-Dade app to stay informed of all the latest developments for the safety of both you and your loved ones. If you'd like more information on hurricane preparedness, please visit miamidade.gov slash OEM. We'll keep 
continue to keep you updated and informed as the storm as the storm arrives closer and we pre preparations change or develop. I also have above related information about the Family Assistance Center. So far, we've had 26 organizations assisting the families at the center providing an array of, 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 of services such as mental health, grief counseling, financial assistance, lodging, travel, and many other services. Today, we've had, today we had 28 families that were served. We've also had over 8,000 people generously donate to the Support Surfside Fund. And we thank you for your generosity and your donations. If you'd like to make a financial contribution or sign up to volunteer, please visit miamidade.gov slash emergency. As I noted this morning, this has been a unified effort with Miami-Dade County and our federal, local, private, and international partners. And we are in their gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, sir. In Spanish, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Director of Media and Public Relations, Erica Benitez. Muy buenas tardes. Quiero comenzar esta actualización con las últimas noticias sobre el Centro de Asistencia Familiar. Hasta ahora tenemos 26 organizaciones las cuales están contribuyendo su ayuda en este centro eh, familiar. Eh, uno de los servicios que están brindando son servicios de salud mental, consejería de luto, eh, servicios financieros, alojamiento, viajes y muchos otros servicios los cuales son tan necesarios en este momento tan difícil. Eh, también tenemos que más de 8,000 personas han donado generosamente al fondo de Support Surfside y si quiere hacer una contribución financiera o inscribirse, les pedimos a todas las personas que estén buscando esta clase de servicios que visiten miamiday.gov diagonal emergency. Como señalé esta mañana, este ha sido un gran esfuerzo unificado por parte de nuestros socios municipales, estatales y federales. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Erica. Representing the Florida Division of Emergency Management, Director Kevin Guthrie. Good evening. We continue to work with our local government and our federal partners. Uh, this afternoon, Chief Kaminsky asked that we go ahead and order up another urban search and rescue type one task force to come in and start uh, making relief for the individuals that are already here on scene in uh, preparation and uh, that was at my ask as well in preparation for any tropical cyclone that may impact the state of Florida. You also know that this afternoon at five o'clock the National Hurricane Center initiated advisories on potential cyclone, potential tropical cyclone number five. I had a call today with our chief meteorologist, her staff, and director Ken Graham of the National Hurricane Center. We coordinated with the Hurricane Center to determine how this system will impact our state and how we can be begin preparing for its impacts. In my discussion with the meteorologists, meteorologists, including Dr. Graham, it was that this system is moving fast at 21 miles an hour to the west-northwest across the Caribbean Sea, and it is too soon to make any determination which way it is going to go. PTC-5 is expected to uh, strengthen by this weekend and become Tropical Storm Elsa. Maximum sustained winds right now are at 35 miles per hour, and the system is continued to forecast, or I'm sorry, is continued to strengthen. At this time, impacts to Florida from this system are not expected through Saturday. We will continue to work with Miami-Dade and our federal partners to enhance our contingency plans for what we may need to do if there should be an impact to South Florida, but I reiterate, there is no impact to South Florida through Saturday. Our state meteorology team is actively monitoring the system in coordination with the National Hurricane Center, and they will continue to provide consistent updates throughout the day to personnel on the ground as well as myself. We're continuing to implement those contingency plans and we'll continue to provide updates on this system to everyone on its potential impacts to Miami and the rest of the state. Thank you. Thank you, Director. 
the director of the National Institute of Standard and Technology, Dr. James Oltoff. Hello, my name is Jim Oltoff. I'm currently serving as the director of the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. I'm here to let you know that I've established a national construction safety team to investigate the June 24 collapse of the Champlain Tower South condominium. Our work will not interfere with any ongoing search and rescue operations. These remain the highest priority of everyone. This will be a fact-finding, not fault-finding, technical investigation. It will take time, possibly a couple of years, but we will not stop until we have determined the likely cause of this tragedy. NIST is a non-regulatory agency with over 50 years experience studying disasters and failures caused by events such as earthquakes, fire, tornadoes, and terrorist attack. What our experts learn from these events lead to better building codes, standards, and practices. So now I'd like to introduce Judy Matrani Reiser, who is co-leading the NIST team on site. Good evening. Thank you, Jim. Our team of experts, experts has spent the last few days working closely with our colleagues from local, state, and federal agencies, and we are grateful for all the support that they've provided us. Based on the information that we have collected, we are able to recommend a full technical investigation under the National Construction Safety Team Act. We will now establish a team to begin the painstaking process of collecting and analyzing and any and all information that might help us determine the technical cause of failure. We are going in with an open mind. In any building collapse, we would want to understand how the building was designed, how it was constructed, modified, and maintained. From the site, we will be interested in samples of the building materials and the local soil conditions. We are in the process of collecting evidence and defining the scope of our investigation. We will also determine the appropriate composition of our team. The team will include NIST staff members as well as outside experts. As the investigation moves forward, we may add expertise to the team as necessary. Our staff members have studied many failures and disasters in the past, including the World Trade Center collapses, the Joplin tornado, Hurricane Maria, and many more. Following the attacks of 9-11, there was widespread recognition that no federal agency had the principal responsibility for an investigation of building failures. Con Congress passed the National Construction Safety Team Act in 2002. This act authorizes NIST to conduct technical investigations of building failures, to issue reports, and make recommendations to improve building codes and standards. The act provides NIST the ability to collect and to preserve evidence from the site of the failure and or disaster and it, to issue subpoenas and to hold hearings. NIST investigative authorities are secondary to criminal or terrorist investigations and as Jim has said, we will not interfere with the active search and rescue operations at the failure site. Buenas noches. Y, um, El equipo de nosotros de experto se ha pasado los últimos días trabajando um, muy bien integrados con nuestras colegas localmente, estatales y federales. Estamos muy um, agradecidos por todo el apoyo que nos han dado en estos últimos días. Basado en la información que hemos recopilado, puedo Eh, decirles a ustedes hoy que hemos hecho la, la determinación que podemos hacer una investigación técnica completa bajo the National Construction Safety Team Act. Ahora vamos a establecer un equipo y vamos a empezar el proceso de recopilar datos y evidencia en los próximos meses y años. Vamos a entrar en este proceso con una mente abierta en cualquier uh, evento como este de edificios que han colapsado tenemos que entender no solamente como el edificio fue diseñado pero también como fue construido como fue modificado y como fue mantenido en el proceso de recopilar esta evidencia vamos a definir eh, 
el extento de nuestra investigación. También vamos a determinar el apropiado um, equipo que vamos a necesitar para completar esta investigación. Nuestros equipos y personas que trabajan conmigo hemos hecho investigaciones como esta en el pasado, incluyendo uh, el colapso de las Torres y Mela, el tornado de Joplin, el huracán María y muchos otros desastres. Nosotros nos vamos a pasar todo el tiempo que es um, necesitado para completar esta investigación, lo que se necesite para entender por qué falló el edificio. Como dijo el director de, de nuestra agencia, no estamos interesados en, um, en entender la, los culpables de esto, pero lo que estamos interesados en entender las maneras técnicas que falló el edificio. Muchísimas gracias. Sure. Judith Mitrani Reiser. J U D I T H M I T R A N I dash R E I S E R. I'm the Associate Chief of the Materials and Structural Systems Division at NIST. Thank you, Dr. Altoff and Associate Chief. And now, Public Affairs Specialist for the U.S. Small Business Administration, Roberto Baltodano. Thank you. Good evening. First and foremost, our heart goes out to everyone who has experienced a loss, whether it is physical, human, or material in terms of their goods, particularly to those families who today learned of the loss of their children. Um, recovering from disaster is not difficult. However, the SBA is here to help in the measure that we can help in that process. And so um, today, the U.S. Business Administration announced that Florida businesses and residents, being homeowners, and renters affected by these disasters can apply for low interest disaster loans from the SBA. SBA customer service representatives will be at the Family Assistance Center located at the CV Hotel 9909 Collins Avenue in Ball Harbor, effective tomorrow starting at noon, 12 p.m., uh, Monday through Sunday, basically. We're going to be there seven days a week to provide a level of care and support that these families require and our business community needs at this time. Disaster Loan Outreach Centers then will be open to provide one-on-one -on -one assistance to survivors, answer questions, and most importantly, guide them by the hand through the process of considering a disaster loan as means of their recovery. The declaration covers Miami-Dade County and the adjacent counties of Broward, Collier, and Monroe in Florida. Ante todo, deseo compartir el sentimiento que la eh, el eh, alcalde eh, Cava expresó al comienzo que eh, recuperarse de un desastre no es fácil y mucho más es cuando se ha perdido tanto como es la vida humana, en especial la vida de niños. De manera que nuestro corazón va hacia todos los sobrevivientes y aquellas familias que han experimentado una pérdida, así sea material o en este caso de un ser querido. La administración o la agencia para el desarrollo de pequeños negocios anunció hoy que los negocios afectados por este desastre y tanto los individuos siendo dueños de casa o inquilinos pueden aplicar para intereses de muy bajo interés eh, vía federal a través de la Agencia para el Desarrollo de Pequeños Negocios. Agentes, representantes de la agencia de SBA van a estar en el Centro de Asistencia Familiar localizado en el Seaview Hotel 9909 Collins Avenue, efectivo mañana a partir de las 12 del día. Este centro va a operar para ofrecer ayuda y asistencia individual a cada uno de los aplicantes para así sea obtener información o completar o considerar una aplicación para un, desa para un préstamo de desastre. Esta declaración cubre los condados de Miami-Dade y los condados adyacentes de Broward, Collier y Monroe en Florida. Gracias. Thank you. Now the Sur Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett. Good evening. Uh, as you may know, the town of Surfside has committed to pulling every shred of documentation related to the uh, collapse of the Champlain Towers South and scanning it and getting it up on a website. Uh, those documents are starting to appear now. I was at a meeting today regarding plans for the property to the north, which is in most respects identical. and. Uh, 
it, it's got residents there that have expressed pretty serious concerns about whether or not their building is safe. To that end, we have, uh, we have hired an eminent engineer. This engineer did work on the Pentagon after 9-11. He did work on the FIU bridge uh, recently that went down in South Miami. So uh, he's been, uh, now I was there in a meeting, he's pouring over the plans for that building and uh, uh, expressing concerns about those plans in that uh, they may not be complete. So what we're doing is we had the owners of that condominium in today, and I can say that uh, up to this point, they've been very cooperative and helpful. Um, they've been uh, providing us with information. Um, I think that's something that uh, NIST, who just spoke a little while ago, is probably going to want to take a look at, and we're going to be happy to work with them. Uh, but the bottom line is there are steps that we're going to be taking in conjunction with NIST and anybody else that wants to assist to develop a plan to ensure the residents who are living in that building that it is safe for them to be there. Uh, in the interim, we have arranged uh, for alternative uh, housing for anybody in that building that has a fear, which is a fabulous use of the money. Um, I'm happy to say that uh, I have had some experience with that site already and the director um, who's doing the work for that site and we're getting great results. The money's going out to a handful of nonprofits, dozens of families, and uh, the help is being delivered. Lastly, I'd like to make an announcement for the governor. Um, I was handed a document yesterday and asked to speak about it today. It's called Surfside Strength for the Ch Champlain Towers First Responders and Community. Uh, the website is surfsidestrength.com and that site is, uh, is created for emotional support and assistance for families, first responders, and community support. It's a one-stop shop for emotional support or help for anybody that's feeling anxious or upset. Uh, you can go to that site and uh, they will be uh, there to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And our Creole translator, Dona and Letterburg. Bonsoir tout le monde. Je dis à ça fait septième jour depuis tragédie a commencé et depuis là nous t'es pas là avec on a mis tant journée là des combien nous arriver retirer deux monde qui mouri. Ça portait quantité monde qui mouri à 18 pour hier. Nous gain pile regret pour nous annoncer que parmi monde ça gain deux petits monde là d'ailleurs. Une gain 4 ans, l'autre là gain 10 ans. C'est un pile regret lorsque nous connaît gain la vie qui perdu et parmi monde ça gain petit monde là dedans. Pour le moment, nous sommes capables de dire que nous avons 139 personnes que nous connaissons là, mais nous avons 145 personnes que nous pouvons connaître côté jusqu'à ce qu'il y a. l'autre côté, nous avons surveillé le cyclone numéro 5 là, qui commence à avancer. Pour le moment, nous n'avons pas aucune prévision comment ça va lier en termes d'impact pendant le week-end. Mais nous avons trop bon tout pour nous annoncer comment ça va lier pendant la semaine qui va venir. Mais pour le week-end, pas un impact important que nous sommes capables de penser qu'il va arriver. L'Institut national norme avec technologie a annoncé qu'il y a ouvert une investigation sur le building là qui tombe. Ça va permettre que nous faisons des éclaircissements possibles à partir de l'investigation qui va le faire. En dernier point, nous sommes capables de dire que l'équipe nous continue à travailler sur place. Nous remercions en pile pour le travail incroyable que a fait et pour être capable de porter contribution notre tragédie ça pour nous sortir là-dedans. Merci un peu. Thank you Mr. Larabour. We're going to open up for questions and answers and I remind you again to please raise your hand once you're once you're called upon address who the question is going to be to for and then let them provide an answer. Sir here. Your first question, you know, morale, morale is still high. Yeah? You know, we're, we're working hard. 
you know, as Kevin mentioned earlier, you know, we decided we're, we're making the transition in regards to the mobilizing the federal assets coming through as well. I think it's important with how hard we're working. Uh, you know, the time, it's over 200 hours, but there's 145 individuals still missing. So we're continue to, to move forward and, uh, you know, do, do what we do. Uh, in regards to uh, the group, uh, the Mexican group, uh, where they're allowed to come. You know, we said they would. I uh, didn't meet them this morning, um, but you know, they definitely can come in. We're we're incorporating different units to assist. So they're, they're, they're okay with you guys. I mean, they're, they're working with you guys. Though? I guess I get clarification of who exactly we're speaking. With. The, uh, the the topos. The yes, uh, topos. I, I was instructed that they were going to come here today at ten, and they never did. So, thank you, Chief. Mike. So, so this, how do you make sure you coordinate the work is not conflicted, but added to the work of local and state agencies? And to those who listen and say, a few years perhaps is too long, that we need answers sooner, what do you say to that concern and have people looking up and down the coastline and not doing Sure. Um, I'll answer the first question, and I think that um, everyone standing behind me has done a phenomenal job coordinating on site. We have gotten nothing but complete cooperation since we have been here. Um, the efforts that are happening to make sure that there's coordination between the local, state, and federal levels is phenomenal. I am very proud to be working alongside everyone that is on site. Um, for your second question, um, our job is to understand the building failure and we're, we are going to do that for as long as it takes. I understand the concerns um, from residents. That is not our jurisdiction um, to address those concerns, but instead we're working under our authorities to do the work that's ahead. And we're a scientific agency and that is our job. Thank you, ma'am. We're going to go with Spanish media for one question. Quiere saber los costos. Ay, sí. Sí, eso, eh, FEMA tiene una parte para ayudar con eh, las funerarias y como tenemos eh, tantas donaciones privadas, también podemos seguir para los que no califican. Entonces estamos uni uniendo todos los grupos que tienen fondos para arreglar exactamente eh, cómo vamos a seguir. Gracias. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ma'am. Yes, well, I mean, definitely the inclement weather affects, you know, the job that we're doing. You know, it just compounds and makes it more difficult. Uh, we're still definitely moving forward, uh, delaying. We're, we're, we're making progress in regards to our search and rescue, uh, but it's, it's going to be still a lengthy, lengthy process. Uh, you know, the water itself, you know, it hasn't impeded in areas where we're at, you know, so we're not having to pump anything like before in, in the lower part of the garage. Um, but, you know, it's definitely difficult. Over here, sir. Chief. Chief. When you say that the two victims, the children that were found today, they were related, and also to, uh, if there was anything about today's discovery as far as the way you've been searching um, that was different that allowed you to uh, find the two victims? No, I, first I couldn't say if they were related, um, but our, our process is our process. So, I mean, this is what we've been doing in regards to, you know, delay and, and, and again, just the impact. You know the the debris. What we're encountering, it, it, it's a lengthy process. It's a difficult process. You know, but we just continue with that, and you know, we were fortunate to recover. Unfortunately, deceased. A new area today that you were able to get into. 
Oh, we're focusing all throughout. So as I've already stated, we had the rescue grids and we continue to focus throughout the rescue grids. So we're delaying uh, the debris, um, hopefully floor by floor. So as we go through, you know, nothing's changed in regards to what we're looking for. You know, when we come across voids, when we come across certain aspects, you know, that's where we'll, we'll tunnel through. We, we try to expand to see, you know, if we find a void space where we could find a victim, you know, that's alive. Thank you, Chief. Last three questions. We're going to go here. One. Um, in relation to the investigation, there were um, people who were inside that building complaining about new structures going up around them and how that impacted that building as far as cracks and the process of exploding to, to build that new building. Is this investigation going to include how other structures going up around old buildings can impact them? In addition to that, on the second half of that question, our city so I can answer the first question I'll let someone from city or, or county answer the second part um, but related to the first part we will be looking at everything we will um, be looking at the site conditions we will be looking at the structure itself and environmental conditions that may have affected the structure so our plan is to collect all of that information aggregate it, do our analysis, and then provide results and recommendations when we're done. Thank you. We're gonna go to the last two questions. Man over here, and Carlos will end up with you. My question is for second. Mayor Levine Cata. Wait, could you need the second part? Levine. I'm sorry, you had a second part, man? Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry. Well, um, so as mayor, I have the ability to um, improve let's say the way in which we do our certification process and so on the legislation requires the county commission and i can assure you that we're looking at everything How's that? yeah <laughs> very well said madam mayor uh our job will fall in place right after this and uh, we'll be looking at every angle of this and the investigators to have their part our part would be the legislation with the code and everything one thing is the building and what took place here. The other thing is what we could do to look at the code now and see how we could approve, as the mayor said, working right. together. Yes, and we are convening a panel of experts and starting to explore those opportunities. There was a question from you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a two-part question, if I may. One, I, I'm not sure privacy issues are a concern here, but is there any more information you tell us about the children that were found today? My other question is, I'm a reporter from Canada. We know that there are a number of different For the children, I, I think it's so important that we protect the privacy of the families and allow the families to say what they're comfortable sharing. I'm so sorry. As to the nationalities, yes, many nationalities, according to the information that we have received, many nationalities are represented. So uh, do you have that uh, latest information? How many different nationalities? I know we have. Yes. Yes. You In terms of, of of our list of unaccounted for, yes, there are multiple uh, nationalities um, from from around the world that people have called. I, I believe uh, Argentina, Paraguay. Paraguay um, you know, from Europe. There's a lot of uh, you know. It's a, this is a international tragedy actually here in our hometown. We're going to have Carlos over here, Carlos. My question's for the chief. Chief, it's our understanding that some of the families were told that anywhere between five and six floors of the building are underground, and that you guys are obviously trying to get to that portion of the building because chances are you're going to find additional bodies. Can you give us any more information on that, as well as the focus on the collapsed pool deck? I'd imagine some engineers want to get to that portion of the building to get a better sense of what may have happened. Yeah, so definitely... Our use of our structural engineers are just checking the stability in regards to the sections where we work. Uh, while we're moving debris, uh, we definitely see there's several floors during that pancake collapse uh, that's in that lowest subfloor, that rod section. 
So just showing the magnitude, I don't know the exact floors you know, where we're at, but several floors within that 10 to 12 foot space. Is it proven challenging? Have you been able to make more progress in getting there? It seems like you're moving a lot more debris. No, it's, it's extremely challenging. Uh, we're definitely making progress. I mean, we're working extremely hard around the clock, uh, rotating our personnel, uh, have additional resources coming so that we can relieve our personnel, uh, so we have fresh personnel to continue moving forward. Uh, so we're definitely making progress. We'll go from there. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.